so today has been a number of realizations. <laughs> it's been a very long day. Um, I, I woke up to the bell and um, after breakfast I went for a walk. I asked permission to leave so that I could go buy some soap. Um, and so I walked to the 7-Eleven that's maybe like, I don't know, a kilometer, kilometer and a half away. Um, so it was a long walk, which was nice. And the difficulty with me for observing walking Rupa and trying to find the Dukkha, which is the suffering in this posture, is that it takes a really long time <laughs> to suffer, um, or to observe suffering in walking, because, um, the feeling of fatigue or tension in the legs or tired or any of those things does not present itself easily to me. Um, and looking for it is not the right practice. You don't want to see dukkha, you just see dukkha or don't. But every posture is always suffering, so it's not like you have to wait for it to suffer. <laughs> it's already suffering, but you have to see it. So I have a hard time seeing walking Rupa. Um, but I've done a lot of attempts using walking Rupa today because mostly I'm sitting just because it's very natural to be in that posture because I'm in my kuti all the time reading. So I don't like sitting more than the other postures, but um, it's more natural given the circumstances that I'm in. Um, but I kind of have had a really long day of these different observations and uh, when I got back I made a list of like all of the ways in which I was curing Rupa's suffering. Um, going to the store to get soap was to wash Rupa's feet because feeling like dirty feet was causing suffering. Um, and you know, drinking water or standing up or um, getting coffee because uh, of addiction and headache, uh, understanding that some of these things are just desire, like they're not the proper force. Um, you're supposed to be forced from one position to another rather than choosing one position over another or allowing Kulesa to come in, which is this conscious desire to do something rather than um, just like when you're laying there and you get kind of stiff and you don't think about it and you just change your position because it hurts but you don't think about it that's the proper way to change position but then you also have to use <laughs> um, awareness of why you're making that change so it's, it's bringing awareness to a very natural way of changing um, and I think that when I'm walking around I forget to be very natural in how I walk around and I'm trying to like see walking Rupa um, instead of just being very natural in the way I would walk and observe that natural state as this position. Um, but it, afternoons are more hard. <laughs> it gets a little boring um, or the day feels longer um, or I just kind of get restless more in the afternoons than I do in the mornings when I'm studying and practicing. Um, and I think it's like that at home too. I think that I get more restless in the afternoons in general. Um, but in thinking about things today and like what I'm understanding about the theory of these practices, because I understand the theory, but I don't in practice truly understand a lot of the things yet. I haven't experienced them. Um, I see how they apply very much to my moi, um, and I see how they can change my moi in a very strong way, and I'm actually really excited about that. Um, the, the connection between language and moi has been very strong to me for a really long time, and there's a comparison between this practice and language as well, which really helps. Um, so. Basically, um, this Ajahn was describing how when you learn to read, you have to not only know 
the letter, like you have to know the sound it makes, but you also have to know the form of it. Like you have to see it and recognize it. You can't just know the sounds A, B, C, because then you don't recognize them when you see them. And you can't just see them and not know the meaning of them and how they go together. But when you start understanding both what is called the shape of it, like the full form of it, and what it means, that's when you understand how letters work and how you can read. And then she didn't say this, but I say this, that when you're reading, those sounds and letters and meanings all arise and fall away rapidly as you're like going through the words. Like you don't hold on to each of them and when you come upon C you're not like this is the same C as the C before, it's just in a new word. That's very much what this practice is. It's very much what the four postures are. So I understand the names of the letters. Um, and I understand the sounds of the letters, but I don't understand the forms yet. Like, I don't, I don't really see the forms yet. Um, and I think that applying that same practice that I'm doing here in just observing the postures um, takes the tyranny of self out of my practice, which almost makes me cry <laughs> um, because it feels like it's a really important profound change um, in my process and my ambition towards Yodmoy. Um, I think that's really going to be huge. I was sweeping my kuti this morning and I was realizing that I don't like judge myself on how how I'm sweeping. Like if there's one of these leaves that are a little bit more stubborn, I just have to do more passes with the broom. Like I don't judge my inability to sweep or something. Um, and so not having this tyranny of the self or the ego or like how I'm sweeping, that sounds so lame, but escaping the tyranny of the self in that task is what I want in Moi, is to take out the judgment of I. And I think that this practice of just seeing sitting Rupa, standing Rupa, walking Rupa, lying down Rupa, all of these things, seeing that in my moi forms as well, instead of being like, I'm not doing it right, or this isn't right, or blah blah blah, you just feel it, and it allows me to be way more neutral in understanding the form. And I think that up until now, in moi, I've only had glimpses of the feeling. I'm always thinking of Chat Chai and Sagat saying, how does that feel? Because that's how you know whether a technique is correct or not. In this practice, I know whether I'm practicing correctly or not by how it feels. I have the theoretical understanding of Muay Thai pretty, pretty solid, but the experiential knowing of those forms and being able to recognize them, like reading, isn't there yet, but this practice shows me how to do that in Muay, and I'm really, really excited about that. Um, And I was, when I came here, I was so scared of like sitting with myself so much. <laughs> um, because in my everyday life, I have this fairly constant feeling of frustration and stress and urgency. And it's just this like, I know it's a false perception, but it's this perception of like time constraint and having to do so many things and being frustrated by not doing them well or not being how I want to be. Um, I have all this craving and desire and I like cling to things. And when I was talking to the monk yesterday, I didn't know the words for what I was trying to say. So I like picked up the pen and like held the pen really tight, like just like holding the pen, this is an emotional thing, and how I just want to learn to like put it down. And he was like, yes, and he kept picking up this cloth he had in front of him and like squeezing it to show me the same concept of like when you just hold these things and cling and you just need to kind of let them go. So in my practice in these past two days, um, I've, I've been 
just observing Rupa. Like that's all I have to do is just observe Rupa. And it's actually easier for me to observe Nama, which is the like mental... Nama is what sees or hears or kind of perceives things. Um, that's where I suffer a lot, but Nama is way more subtle, so Nama is harder to see and to catch in the moment. So you use Rupa to teach yourself how to catch things in the moment, and then it will translate into Nama later as you get better at it. And I need to do the same thing. But, so in my everyday life, this, like, stress, um, I thought would carry with me because the thing about this practice is that when you move from sitting rupa to standing rupa, the suffering follows. Like, sitting rupa, even though you're not sitting anymore, is still suffering. It's just fallen away, and now you're standing rupa. But the reason you stood is because sitting rupa suffered. And so you, standing rupa arose in order to cure the suffering of sitting rupa. But sitting rupa is still suffering, and eventually... Uh, you'll note the suffering of standing Rupa and have to change position again, but that that suffering just keeps following because all of these things are impermanent and that is suffering. That's why Buddhism is that the world is suffering or that existence is suffering, is the impermanence of it. You can't maintain anything. Um, if you could maintain something I indefinitely, like forever, that's not suffering, that's nibbana. Um, so, in this thing of like carrying all of these sufferings with you, the way like Lucifer is flying through space carrying hell with him, um, I thought that I would be taking all of that panic and frustration and pressure that I feel all the time, like every second, with me. And what's crazy is that I have not felt it at all. Like, at all while being here. Um, and I feel like little pieces of frustration, like a little bit, because I'm like trying to do something. And then I just stop trying. Like, it's like just see it or don't see it. And the frustration kind of goes away. Or my mind will wander. And that's just Nama Fung. Like, the, the mind wandering is a mental state. It's not wrong. It's part of Dhamma. That's like that's okay. You just acknowledge that it's doing that and you can pull it back to what you're doing. You just don't follow the story of what it's doing. <laughs> don't let it keep talking. Um, and so I have these like tiny, tiny moments of, of frustration or boredom or um, sadness or, you know, thinking about wanting things to be one way or another, but I don't feel any of the things that I feel every second at home which is kind of amazing because it means that, that that suffering has a very particular cause and that by learning to see the positions, the postures, I can affect, I can't change any of these, I can't change this, none of this changes, but I can affect it in a different way. Um, it's just profound to me that it's that in the way that, that changing these positions, the suffering always follows, that that suffering did not come with me at all. Um, so actually today, today's been a little bit hard in the afternoon um, in, in trying to understand some things. I actually feel a little bit farther away from my understanding than I was yesterday, but that just means that I think that I understand the practice more clearly. Um, I think that I see doing things wrong in the practice today that I didn't know were wrong yesterday. I have that in Moy all the time, where like, now that I know that it's wrong, I see lots of errors, whereas before you didn't know it was wrong, and so it didn't occur to you. Um, it just becomes more minute. Um, but so I, I feel more confused today <laughs> than I did yesterday. But I think that's actually a sign of getting closer to wisdom, which is good. But I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere in these... I'm, 
I don't know how much I'll even see Rupa in these three days. Like, the one thing I'm supposed to be doing, um, theoretically, I'm great at it. But, but in practice, it's incredibly hard. So three days is basically just getting on a tightrope and falling off it a lot, but just getting back on the tightrope all the time and just practicing getting back on. Like, that's all I'm doing is just practicing getting back on and losing my balance and falling off and just getting back on. Like, I'm not going to walk that tightrope in this, in this amount of time, but I can keep practicing when I go home, I think. Um, but I have another day, to, a full day tomorrow, um, and I'll be meeting with the monk again. So, um, because the first day and this day were so different from each other, I don't know what to expect tomorrow. Um, but we'll see. So, that's my update for now. It's like 6 at night and it feels like 2 a.m. Um, that is all.